Welcome back to the Kiwi Wedding Podcast. My name is Lydia and I'm your host and a wedding photographer based in Tamaki, Makoto, Auckland. In today's episode, I'm chatting with Felicia. She is a recent bride and she did a lot of DIY for her wedding and they managed to keep it at a very reasonable budget. We chat through her love story and whole experience of planning and we also talk about her pretty newly launched business something socials nz she is doing wedding content creation and we really dig into that and what she has learned from being a part of the wedding industry so far the really great chat this was recorded a little while ago so there might be a few dates in here that aren't as relevant anymore um, in terms of her introductory pricing and everything but still wanted to include it and I think it's good to get a gauge on how much these kind of services cost and yeah we chat through a lot of things on what makes a good content creator and what to look out for. Get right into it, enjoy episode 55 with Felicia. Oh so hi Felicia, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, excited to chat to you all about your recent wedding and then working in the industry as well. Yeah, cool. Thank you. I'm I'm happy to be here. So good. So to get started, if you could just tell me a bit about you and your partner, how you guys met and yeah, your life together. Sure. Well, my name is Felicia, now Mackenzie Orr. We hyphenated, uh, which is really cool. And I am definitely still getting used to that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um uh, Based in the Manawatu, grew up in Palmerston North, Daniel, my husband and I now live in Fielding, which is a small town just 20 minutes away from Palmy, so I'm still within the same vicinity and region of where I grew up. Daniel and I have almost been together for seven years. We were engaged for about two and a half years and we've been married for two months which is crazy that we got married two months ago because it feels like it was last week, uh, which I feel like is probably pretty normal and we're still in that, like sitting in that post-wedding vibe and that energy and feeling, which I think will still be like that for a little while, which is quite nice because I know it won't last forever. So that's kind of where we are at at the moment. We just got back from our honeymoon in Fiji, which was really fun. It was nice and relaxing. Good way to start off the marriage. I was personally a big fan of like not going on a honeymoon right after my wedding. I That week after my wedding, I was just a complete zombie and completely exhausted. And going on holiday and packing up my house was the last thing I wanted to do. So we went six weeks later, which was a perfect amount of time. Uh, how Daniel and I met I really like our meeting story because I feel like it's not a traditional way to meet I feel like most people meet either through mutual friends or online these days but Daniel and I actually met at a networking event and it was a networking event for young professionals I was in my third year of university and this was the first um, event of that kind that I had ever been to and at the event there was like different icebreakers and things to like get to know people and mingle and blah 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 blah. and Daniel and I eventually ended up in like a little group with some of our friends or other people we knew got to talking and I was like this boy is really cute so we added each other on Facebook and that's that our anniversary of dating is the day we met if that gives you any indication of how fast things went between us <laughs> Oh, I love that. Such a cool story. And so, yeah, you did for a while and then got engaged. Can you tell us a bit about your proposal story? I sure can. Uh, So we went to Hawke's Bay for our four-year anniversary and we had booked a wine tour. And I mean, I had a little sneaky feeling that something might happen. And I feel like when you're at that stage of a relationship, you have those kind of thoughts but like you don't really do anything about them in case it doesn't actually happen um but I was right (laughs) it did happen so uh we spent two nights in Hawke's Bay the first night we were just by by ourselves and then two of our friends uh met us the next day and did this wine tour with us so it was us two two of our friends and we did it where we like booked like a a tour like a van so we had like four other strangers with us on this wine tour 
and Daniel proposed on the wine tour. We were at the third winery and I was a little bit tipsy at that point and any like suspicions of like potentially getting proposed to completely went out the window and the winery was super cute. It was very intimate. It was a family winery and we were like literally in their backyard like under like a gazebo type thing and he gave the phone to the lady that owned the winery was like hey can you take a photo and I was like great idea let's take a group photo because like Daniel and I are sitting here in the middle and we've got like all these other people around us and he's like oh no just a photo of us two I was like okay kind of awkward because there's other people here but whatever I'll smile the phone was actually on record it was a video because capturing my like proposal was really important to me and then he got down on one knee and yeah he proposed I was in shock I kind of like left him hanging for a little bit just like waiting because I was just so in shock and maybe a little bit embarrassed too but obviously I said yes Um, but yeah it was really cute and the perfect amount of thought went into it and it I didn't mind people being around because it was still intimate because it wasn't too many people yeah oh so sweet I love that um yeah so nice just a little bit intimate but not too embarrassing (laughs) yeah like I definitely used to be like one of those girls that would watch like YouTube videos of like flash mob like proposals and stuff and like back as a teenager I was like that would be so cool but like as an actual adult being someone proposed I'm like don't do that for me that's too much (laughs) (laughs) oh so good so had you always been one of those girls that had dreamed about your wedding and what it would look like and yeah did you have a certain vision in mind for what you wanted and what those first steps finding a venue all of that I was definitely yeah one of those typical girls that dreamed of my wedding day and that it would be like this big amazing life milestone I never really had a vision though in terms of like what I wanted it to look like or I didn't have a dream dress that I'd had on my Pinterest board for like five years or anything I was pretty go with the flow with that uh but like I did always know I wanted a really big party and celebration with everyone that we love that that was like the most important thing to me and it it very much was that uh I feel like a wedding it does there is an ex, a huge extra level of pressure and stress because it is your wedding it's not just some other party that you're planning uh but the yeah the vibe for our wedding was definitely like just a big party and celebration did you have sort of your top priorities or the most important elements for the day for you in terms of different vendors people vibe obviously mentioned the being a good party already but yeah anything else i mean as i went throughout the process I guess I started to figure out what I did and didn't want. There was, because for me, like I am Fijian, Samoan, Chinese. And so I have like this culture that I wanted to integrate into our wedding. But then my Daniel, my husband, he is just New Zealand European, has like Scottish lineage. And so trying to, like wanting to have like a typical New Zealand Kiwi wedding but then also like trying to bring in those elements was quite hard for me and trying to figure out how I wanted to do that because I think every bride wants their wedding to be their own and unique but it's so hard not to like feed into all like the specific like traditions and things like that um yeah I I really struggled to I guess not be so stressed about the wedding in the lead up uh I had not many people around me that had got married before me so I hadn't attended many weddings as an adult so I really didn't like know how they were meant to go Uh, I was very grateful for one of my friends though she did send me like her run sheet of how her wedding went and that was helpful but it was also like quite scary like seeing how organized a wedding like needs to be if you want it to all go to plan and timeline and everything like that so when like I first wrote my draft run sheet I was like well this just sounds like we're gonna be standing and taking photos all day like literally just like a performance and smiling and I'm like I just don't want it to be that and it took me like a good few months to work through that and realizing that I didn't have it to be like that 
Uh, but like it also was so hard to get to that point as well because there's so much noise uh, and pressure from people around you but then also on social media these days like we get to see everyone's weddings and and I was constantly right up until the day looking at TikTok and being like oh should I add that trend in or that trend in now that my wedding's over I'm like oh I could have added that in or that in and yeah there's just so much pressure and noise that that was quite hard for me to shut off and my uh, my wedding planning process and really just get to what we wanted that was yeah something quite difficult for me yeah it's so hard not to get caught in that sort of comparison trap and then um yeah just seeing so much online or around you and then yeah you've not been to many weddings yourself and just like not knowing and not even how things should be because you can do whatever you want but just having like something to go off I guess exactly. yeah so so understandable I think a lot of people will relate to that can you tell us a bit about your wedding outfits your dress did you get it made or find it off the rack how was that whole process I so got, got married at the beginning so March 2024 and went and tried dresses on for the first time in January 2023 and it wasn't actually till I did that that I was like whoa I actually feel like a bride to be like this is so exciting and it was a very uh, much a fairy tale moment like for me and my friends as well uh, since we're based in the Manawatu we went to two bridal shops we did etc bridal which is in Wanganui and then we did the bridal studio which is in Palmerston North uh, we both we did both of them in the same day which was quite hectic uh, because I just didn't realize like how long um, like wedding dress try on appointments could take as I said earlier like I didn't really have like a dream dress or anything like that but throughout my looking online and stuff I did have like these two dresses that I had screenshotted and they were I think it's it's a print dress gown that's the the type I had like screenshotted uh but I was a very adamant on like not wanting to spend heaps of money like that was something I just couldn't quite wrap my head around <laughs> with the wedding dress I was like it's just a dress I get the whole wedding tax thing I, I get like the it's a lot of material it's intricate design blah blah blah, blah. but I was like really keen to spend like one to two thousand dollars and we walked into this bridal shop and they had a room that was like a thousand dollars and under. I was like, cool, let's look in there, see what the vibe is. Like I had all my friends in there as well, picking out dresses, seeing what I could try on. And then like the shop assistant was like, do you have any inspo? And I was like, oh, well, I'm not like set on these, but like these, like this kind of vibe looks pretty to me in the photo. And then she's like, yeah, you're probably not going to find that design in all that style in this room under a thousand dollars okay and they were really cool because I know like some places are like well do you want to try dresses out of your budget or not because like when you do that that can be quite risky you want to fall in love and so they really did set that preface for me and I was like okay we'll try we'll try in a few so I mean that was my undoing <laughs> and I did find uh my dress I ended up paying about like three thousand dollars so it's not the most expensive dress in the world but it was still more than I wanted to wanted to spend um but yeah the whole experience of trying dresses on was definitely one of my like funnest like parts of wedding planning it was just so cool to be with like my friends and get treated like princesses for a day like it was really really cool so I had my one dress and I am denied about having a second dress for a long time and the only reason that I wanted to have one was to potentially wear something um, that was like Polynesian style to like try and bring in my heritage or just wanting a shorter dress so that like I can dance properly because the dress I ultimately chose had like a really long train. I had a, I had a look in the uh, Polynesian space but I couldn't quite find anything I liked so I ended up just buying uh, a dress off I think oh, Hello Molly like an online Australian boutique. It's a hundred dollars it was white it was uh, mid thigh length um, well it was white but it had orange uh, detailing on it which I really liked and thought was unique because the like color theme for our wedding was bright vibrant colors with the main one being orange so it was really cool to um to incorporate that into my second dress and I didn't even change into that until probably like 9 p.m so it was a very like end of the night type dress 
so I could boogie on the dance floor. <laughs> That's what it really was for me. Uh, and I wanted to get the most wear out of my actual wedding gown that I could because it was so expensive. Uh, I know it's pretty common for brides like change into the second dress like before they re-enter into the reception. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to wear my, my main dress for as long as possible. Sounds like it was a really nice process for you and I love just having like a dance floor second dress and um yeah still wearing your main one through most of the reception but then you have that little da- dance floor moment it's a cool way to do it did you guys have a bridal party and um how was the process choosing them did you find that quite easy uh yes we did uh have a bridal party and we had two on each side uh it was kind of like it wasn't like stressful or anything but there was definitely decisions about who we should and shouldn't have uh I feel like in life like you have your like your friends from high school that if you're still connected in your mid-20s you're probably going to be friends for life and you've got siblings and then you've got people that you've met like later in like adulthood so we were toying up with like those three different types of people and like who should be in our bridal party uh, and we ultimately made the decision that with a wedding, uh, we felt really comfortable being around people that have like been with us for a long time. So like I ended up having my, my sister and then my best friend from high school because I'm like, well, you two do not even like there's no option of you ever leaving my life. So I know that you're going to always be there for me and that when I look at my wedding photos in 30 years, still going to be around and Daniel he had uh one of his best friends that he's known since five years old and then one since high school and he couldn't choose between which one was best man so they were both both best men uh which was really cool we liked the fact that we kept it small so it wasn't too overwhelming like uh being in the industry now and being in the content space I'm like a big bridal party is like so good for content um, and the photos look really cool but in terms of just our experience on the day like just having two on each side was the perfect amount. It can be a lot of people to wrangle if it's a really big bridal party. Yeah lots of energies and personalities. Yeah exactly but yeah that's a really nice number and um, how about the guest list did you find that quite hard to narrow down? That was definitely um, one of the most difficult parts for us and was something that was quite a big stressor for me as we got closer to the wedding. Uh, We based our wedding invite list off our engagement party list um, for the majority of the time and that was also quite difficult as well because our engagement, we, we got engaged in June 2021 and our engagement party was October 2021. So coming through to March 2024, like that's quite a long time for like people to potentially chop off and like not be your friends and things anymore. Uh, But for most of last year, we were running around the 75-ish mark for like the longest time. And I was like, yeah, like no more than 80. That's what our wedding's going to be. And then when it got closer to actually sending out invites, that's when grandparents and parents and staff wanted to like add in extra people and I being Polynesian like grandparents they're very proud of their grandchildren getting married and so they want to invite a lot of people and that's why I kind of like didn't ask my grandparents until it came to the point that they're like have you invited these people and I'm like no uh so we came to a compromise and we added a few more people here and there and we almost ended up closer to 100 which is it's okay now it's all done and dusted but I can say that it was a very high stress stressor point for me just in terms of one budget but then because I did such a DIY wedding um like super DIY and that I bought plates and knives and forks and glassware and napkins and things like that and I'm an organized person so I I bought a lot of that in advance for a certain quantity so like trying to find little bits like that uh my family didn't really understand they just thought it was a money thing but I was like no there's all these extra things that I now need to buy uh but I obviously managed to to pull it off but at the time yeah it was not fun it's always a bit stressful with family members that kind of come out of the woodwork last minute and have these sort of expectations which you know you want to honor and respect them but then 
yeah, there's a lot that goes into it and a vision for what you want, which um, doesn't always allow more and more and more people. Yeah, and especially because, like, I knew it was just going to go so quickly. The day was going to go so quickly and having a uh, hundred people to say hello to just seemed very overwhelming for me. With our engagement party, I think we had around the 70 mark. And while that was only a four-hour event, I just remember it going past like that, like so quick, because I was just pulling, being pulled left, right and centre. And so I really wanted to try and manage that in the best way possible for our wedding. And I think we did a pretty good job of that. We kind of just let people come to us on the day. And whoever didn't, I, well, I didn't say hello to you on the day because there's just so much going on. But yeah, it still did go so, so quickly. So can you tell us a bit about the big day, how it all went down and yeah, any highlights or favourite moments? Yeah, for sure. So we picked, we picked March for a reason because like based on previous years, we, we were like March seems like a pretty mild weather month. We are talking about New Zealand though and it can be very temperamental uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, We were very lucky that we were able to set up from the Thursday uh, in our venue which was amazing giving us two full days to set everything up and then we had our rehearsal on the Friday afternoon. Uh, So everything was all set, ready, locked and loaded like there was really not much to do on the Saturday morning and not that I would have done it, but I would have had to delegate it off. But there wasn't a lot a lot to do for anyone, which was awesome. And that was thanks to my months and months of organisation and sending out run sheets to people and blah, blah, blah. The, it truly was the best day of my life. And it's so cliche, but it really is because you've just invited all these people that you love so much. They're your favourite people and they're all in one room. Like how often does that happen not sure if we're going to get that again like anytime soon in our life so the fact that that was like the vibe and the energy just made Daniel and I like so happy like I was just like literally smiling like the whole day I as someone that's now in the industry and being able to watch like other people's weddings like I only and I only shot two weddings before my own but still that taught me a lot about my own day and the need to be present trying to adopt the mentality like what will be will be like it is what it is in terms of weather and everything like that with the weather I am I'm really big into manifesting so I was doing my best to like manifest a really good day Uh, and I mean we didn't have the worst weather in the world we didn't have torrential rain but we did have uh, a windy and a drizzly day which meant that we did have to last minute change our ceremony from outside to inside Uh, and that's the only point in the day where I felt a little tiny bit of oh shit like a little bit of stress Uh, but then once I was sent a photo of what they'd done to transform the inside space into a ceremony it looked beautiful and I was like okay cool this looks good and it's gonna work out how it's meant to be and it did like I I wasn't really bothered about the wedding or anything with the weather we were still able to go out and like take our bridal party photos and things Uh, but yeah it was just a really fun day it was cool seeing all our friends dressed up as well Uh, I'm a little bit crazy so like not only was I out of my comfort zone at my wedding I decided to do Um, a performance as well so I sung at our wedding Uh, I'm a singer and I like singing but I haven't done like much performing in front of people and so I was working with a singing teacher for like a whole year before the wedding uh, just to like improve my voice and then like pick what songs we were going to do and I so I sung two songs and that was that was one thing that had me so nervous in the lead up to the wedding and on the wedding day as well and it was a surprise for Daniel and everyone so it was hard because I couldn't share in my stress and fear with everyone else Uh, but I did it and I'm really proud of myself for doing it Um, it was nerve-wracking but of course everyone's there to support and love me and it it was great I, I was I did it at like 9 30 so I was a little bit drunk at that point so I was trying not to be like trying to monitor my alcohol consumption so I wasn't too drunk uh but yeah 
really fun best day ever we did make the decision to do like a day after thing as well which was fun but also way too tired and hungover for that but it was still good to see people especially people that had traveled to just say goodbye to them before they they departed um from us but yeah it was very bright very colorful I was very blessed that my stepmom she has a um like a ve- event styling and backdrop business so she did a lot of uh the and all the decorations and things for me and signage which took off a massive stress off my back so yeah our wedding was very much a team effort between like family friends and us and yeah super grateful that we all kind of came together and made it happen for our big day love hearing that and so impressed that you sung as well and that late in the day like such a big build up to it but um yeah it would have been such a cool surprise for Daniel and everyone else as well and you've mentioned a few things already but was there anything that you found um the hardest about the whole wedding planning process and anything you look back on and might regret or do a bit differently I wouldn't say I would do anything differently but I I did really struggle to switch off from wedding my wedding mind and I know Daniel did get a little bit frustrated with that at times at times because every conversation I had with him was was about the wedding and we and I understand now that we have a life outside the wedding so if if I could go back I'd be a little bit like a bit more strict around boundaries in terms of like when I'm going to put wedding mind on and do stuff for it and then switch out of it um so much easier said than done because I really struggle with it like it really does take over your whole life uh, but yeah, I definitely could see myself going back and making more of an effort like around like date nights and stuff to not bring in wedding chat all the time because that's where I feel like it really consumes you and you feel like you're like in this weird little like hole or time of your life that you want to get out of but you can't get out of because you have to wait for the wedding and you want the like we tried not to use language like oh, I can't wait for it to be over but sometimes things like that were said because there was just so much going on with it but then at the same time you're like well just we need to be patient and we're never going to get this time again we're coming up to one of the biggest days in our life so we just kind of have to roll with it uh but yeah it was hard to switch off and if I go go back yeah I'd be a bit kinder to myself and be like you don't need to think about it and plan and look on TikTok all the freaking time oh that's so relatable I love that you called it the wedding mind and um yeah I think it's so easy to do and especially if you have like a creative or like project kind of brain that's always going and thinking of ideas and then stressing over stuff as well um super hard to switch off yeah that's great advice to just try and set intentional date nights where you don't talk about wedding at all or communicate through that whole thing so it's not fully overtaking your life because that's when I think there's such a like hole after the wedding it's like what now but yeah you've got your whole life and relationship to go so (laughs) yeah did you guys have like a set budget you were working with if you're happy to talk about what you spent or even a ballpark figure and how that went if you went over budget yeah what was that process like yeah happy to chat about that um yeah spending thousands of dollars on a wedding to us was a little bit like what the heck like this is crazy uh I think in recent years with COVID and things like that and inflation like everything is just way more expensive uh Daniel uh being a boy had no understanding of what a wedding might cost he wanted it to be around the fifteen thousand dollar mark and then when I started spinning out like how much guests we have and how much catering and blah 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 will cost he's like okay we're gonna go down I'm like yeah we are uh but we still did really well uh we were about around the 25k mark uh I thought it was gonna be closer to the 30k mark and I was kind of scared to calculate it but my friends were like no let's calculate it like after the wedding so we did and it was around the 25k mark which super uh I'm super grateful for uh that we were able to keep it around that mark that mark and I mean that's still a lot of money but I think that's below what the average wedding costs in New Zealand and like the reason why we were we were able to do it for 
that cost is things like our friend uh, who used to be a chef, she was the one that catered for us. So she did it for like less than $50 a head, which is unheard of in the wedding industry. Uh, my stepmom doing all the signage and stuff she did that and like uh, artificial flower installation she did that all for free as a gift that would have been I don't know 3k we only had a professional photographer and then we just had one of our friends video the ceremony and uh, speeches for us and then we had like a student videographer as well uh, which was cool I did initially have um, a professional videographer as well. We were going to spend 4K on photo and 4K on video separately. Uh, paid the deposit for both. So ambitious. Uh, then Daniel sat me down and was like, we're not spending 8K on both. Had a little cry, realized we couldn't. Um, Cancelled, lost the $500 deposit for the video and then tried to make provisions to make sure we still had some video captured because that was really important to me. Uh, I got our flowers, our like fresh flowers, like our bouquets and things from a flower farm rather than through a florist, which meant it was so much cheaper. And yeah, I was really crafty with those kind of things to make sure I could try and keep it down as much as possible. Like with my dress about being around 3k, I felt like that was like, that's an average-ish price for a wedding dress. I know they can go up to like 10k or if you want you could do the 1k but yeah I was very nifty with uh how I did our wedding and the help we got from people that meant a lot to us and yet yeah, people just doing us favors as well meant that we could have this really beautiful wedding that probably looked like a 45k wedding but was only 25k thanks to the generosity of the people around us and that was something I like constantly reiterated to Daniel because I don't think he quite understood like the amount of work that I was doing to make sure this was a budget-friendly wedding as much as possible uh, but yeah I'm really proud of us and myself for keeping it around that mark for the kind of wedding that we did have. That is so impressive um, of a number for that many guests and yeah pretty unheard of but also quite realistic for people to hear and yeah, I've been having a few chats lately about just all these incredible weddings that we see featured online, but that 90% of them are like up around the 100k mark when you're looking at those really like Pinterest, you know, yeah, featured on wedding blogs and stuff sort of weddings. So it's great for people to hear what is a bit more realistic and more common than those weddings in New Zealand, I would say. And yeah, I think that's so important just like calling on your friends and family and they're usually more than happy to help and yeah just using those resources around you and finding clever ways to save if that's kind of your budget which yeah it can be done basically yeah and that is more like it's obviously more work like doing a DIY wedding and sometimes when I was in the thick of it I'm like why am I doing this to myself uh but yeah like once you get out of it you're like definitely worth it and like with our venue we were allowed to bring our own like catering into it and we were also allowed to bring in like our own alcohol as well which significantly cut down costs because we weren't paying like bar prices for for beverages yeah so helpful if you can do that so and um yeah you already talked about going on your honeymoon so you waited a little bit which is a nice way to do it and yeah what was planning that like we weren't set on exactly what we wanted to do again me being ambitious I was like well let's go on a six week trip to Europe <laughs> and then I realized we can't afford that with the budget and I think that that speaks to who we are as people because like I try to constantly remind myself that a lot of people like on social media and stuff uh, there will be an element of people willing to go into debt for things like a wedding or for a holiday Daniel and I were very financially savvy and we would never do that um, that's just not part of like our values and like our life goals uh, so we decided that with our wedding we weren't going to have any physical we didn't want any physical gifts because we have been living in our house for four years and we just didn't need any homewares or anything like that because we've been living together for so long so 
we did what I feel like is very common now doing a wishing well with donations going towards the honeymoon and so we said that whatever money we get from that that is going to fund our honeymoon uh I mean we could we could have waited till after but I ended up booking on the Thursday before the wedding which was uh the 29th of Feb which was like leap day so there was like a really good sale on um so I did end up actually whacking it on Daniel's credit card but then I just had faith that we would have enough money uh from the gifts to pay it off and we did thankfully uh our guests our family and our friends were very generous and helped towards covering that honeymoon cost which we were so grateful for uh we went to Fiji for seven nights which is a little bit more achievable than six weeks in Europe uh, I still have my my Europe dream trip that I want to do one day but trying to knock that out in the same year as as getting married just wasn't achievable for our finances uh, so yeah, the planning of it was quite last minute because I just saw the really good sale to the islands and I was like, okay, maybe we should uh, capitalize on this. And I knew it was only because it was a Thursday before the wedding. I knew it was only going to be a few days before we found out how much money we were going to get. And that's always an interesting one as well. If people are wanting to plan their honeymoon beforehand in order to go like right, like after their wedding and you might like yeah book this trip and hope that you get money but you really don't know how much you're gonna get so it was a little bit of a gamble not gonna lie um but it did manage to work out for us so nice to just yeah pop over to an island like such a beautiful relaxing time and then yeah having something to look forward to just like a bit after your wedding I love that you did it that way yeah so am I because yeah we definitely did experience the post wedding blues I thought it would have hit me the week after, like I was just ready for it to be like, what am I doing with my life? But I think just because I was so exhausted and needed to recharge my social battery, I didn't feel it and probably probably until like two, week two or three after. And I thought I was only going to feel it because I did most of the planning, but failed to realize that my husband also got married and he was part of the wedding too (laughs) and so he did feel like a little bit like lost like okay what now we had so much anticipation for this big life event and now it's over so to have something to look forward to like Fiji in three to four weeks was absolutely perfect just to prolong that feeling of excitement. Did you have any like helpful websites, apps, different resources that you used during the planning process in terms of finding vendors and all of that? I actually didn't. I came across all these amazing directories after I got married. (laughs) And the only reason that I've come across them is because now as a wedding vendor, I'm looking to see where I can advertise myself. But yeah, for some reason, I was a bride-to-be that didn't come across any of those which I mean is a little bit gutting but also okay uh social media was was my best friend for inspiration uh Pinterest as well Uh, just helps like to get you excited and figure out what you might want I think at the very beginning when we first got engaged I was just like well what do I what I want what I want it to look like and having Pinterest and being able to see like pretty photos really like got me in that mood being like oh I like that I like that and that helped me to start like sourcing things for what I might want yeah for our wedding so good so helpful all of those and um yeah popular for a reason definitely is there any advice that you would give to couples planning a wedding at the moment from your perspective being a bride set realistic expectations I think that's something that I didn't do and I was very uh ambitious which I mean is also fine to to dream big and have a big vision but yeah set expectations around what is actually achievable because like it's nice to put on a 20% deposit but then it's going to come to a time when you're going to have to pay that all off and I think people might not really realize that like I did uh I'm sure this is a pretty cliche thing as well but like enjoy the process like hopefully you're not going to get a marry, married a second time and this is going to be your one big time in your life that you do this you're never going to be a bride to be a fiance again so really sit in that feeling and just enjoy the season of your life it is a very exciting season and like the last yeah like four months have been just so much fun for Daniel and I like even having our hen stews and our stag do's like 
having the that kind of sleepover with like our very best friends like not sure when that is ever going to happen again either so it was just so special to be able to yeah bring all those people together in one space celebrating us uh and then when it comes to winning day and I've heard this a lot and I feel like I need to say it because especially if you're a type A person and very organized, like you're naturally want to go into hosting mode. And it's so important that you remember that you are the guest of honor, like get everything, get everyone to do everything else for you. Like you shouldn't need to lay a finger. And that was something that I was very aware of myself because I knew I could very easily go into that mode of being like, okay, what needs to be done, blah, 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 blah. But I'm so proud of myself that I did such a good job. I let everyone take care of me. I had um, no idea what the time was, like the whole day, which is cool because I'm someone that's always looking at the time. What's next? What's next? Let's tick off the timeline and everything. But no, I was able to just like sit in the moment and let people like tell me, okay, Felicia, you got to do this now. It's really cool because it made me feel like a a bit of a celebrity, not going to lie. Uh, but yeah that would be my advice as you should feel like a celebrity on your wedding day or you know a queen whatever you want to call it yeah I think it's so easy and so relatable that kind of personality type or just yeah you're letting go of a bit of control and just enjoying it is um, easier said than done but such a good one to yeah focus on what is married life like now you touched on the post-wedding blues a bit and I guess you're just easing back into routine this week but yeah how's it all going uh, yeah it's going well I think yeah now we're in post-holiday blues <laughs> but it's not it's not too bad uh, nothing really changed too much for us because we were obviously living together so in that respect our our lives are still the same uh, but we have really enjoyed introducing ourselves as like this is my husband this is my wife like it's kind of we feel a little bit like little kids like saying it we're like hee hee uh but it's so much fun and we know one day that's just going to be old news and we're going to be so used to it so we're just having fun with it now uh and we do personally feel like there has been this extra level of commitment to each other and it has changed the way we view our relationship and wanting how we're going to like grow and develop in the future we were always pretty big on that like before marriage and before engagement and everything but we have found that with getting engaged and then getting married there has been like these extra next levels of commitment that have felt really nice and secure uh, which is cool very special and like blessed that we are able to share that with each other Uh, so yeah still definitely sitting in the the honeymoon phase of being freshly married and we're gonna yeah just soak up as much as we can of that before we're like okay what's next oh so nice to chat through your wedding and then um yeah cool that you're still in the wedding space but working as a vendor now and um yeah we'll have a chat about something new social so if you could firstly Tell me a bit about how that came about, sort of journey of what's led you to where you are today. And yeah, maybe a bit of overview of everything you do. Yeah, sure. Well, I have to say that being a bride-to-be and being in in the wedding industry as a bride-to-be was the catalyst for being like, okay, I don't want to leave the wedding industry, so how can I stay here? And I feel like that's the case for a lot of vendors. They usually start with getting married themselves and being like, well, now I want to be a part of this and I want to be a part of other people's love stories. So that was very much what it was for me. Uh, So yeah, Something New Socials is a wedding content creation service. I capture behind the scenes content of people's special days, steering less away from those like perfect manicured moments and getting the behind the scenes like photos, mainly videos, I steer more towards videos of moments that they that couples will forget not even realize happen and then the next day that they can relive it and that's that's the allure with wedding content creation because it's all shot on my iphone 14 i'm able to deliver it all to them the very next day 
they receive all raw images and raw videos but then I also edit them a highlight film as well and that's paired with um, their sentimental music that they've used during their wedding and then depending on the package as well I edit some like fun little videos that they can use for social media I could center it around like the first look or the ceremony or if the bride or the groom wants to we can do like fun little transition videos uh, of them getting ready and things like that uh, which is a cool element to bring into the getting ready part of the day and that's really really fun I first saw uh, wedding content creation probably I want to say maybe like three or so years ago and I saw it over in America just from social media and I thought to myself wow that is really cool not sure if there's a market here in New Zealand Australia yet but I'll keep an eye on that and then yeah 12 or so months ago I started seeing it pop up in Australia I'm like okay cool this is coming and then I feel like yeah last wedding season and this one that's currently coming to an end is when I started to see it pop up more around New Zealand and so I'm someone that struggles to act in a timely fashion generally but for for this I did and I'm I'm really proud of myself because usually I will sit in that fear of self-doubt and no I can't do this I'm not qualified enough how could I possibly capture people's wedding days like that's so scary it's such a um, a big day and the wedding industry it's a lot of pressure and blah 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 all of that self-talk happened before I launched but I was like no actually Felicia let's give this a go I my background is I've been working in marketing for seven years specializing in content creation for the last probably four so I already had those the skills knowledge and experience in content creation for brands and businesses and so I was like well let's just see if I can transfer this over into the wedding industry and I did and it was very easy because I was just taking what I already knew and just pivoting to another industry uh, which was really cool because it meant it was easy for me to launch I already knew what I was doing in terms of launching a business and marketing and everything like that uh, I was nervous though because I wasn't sure like how well it will, would be received because it is such a, a new thing I was very surprised that it was received so well which was cool um, I probably had about like 10 price inquiries within 48 hours which I mean I have nothing to compare it to in the wedding industry but I thought that was pretty good uh, and it was just really exciting and there was hype around it so yeah that's been kind of the start of my journey I it was hard managing launching that while also planning my own wedding like I did both of them at the same time uh, I officially launched in I think like mid-jan and then I shot my first wedding two weeks later which was a bit cray cray to me I thought maybe like I wouldn't actually shoot any this wedding season and it would be next season but no that wasn't the case so I was chucked in the deep end uh what I found was really helpful was I knew of photographers and vendors and things in my area in the Manawatu and I reached out to them and asked them if I could sit down and have a chat with them and just ask them for advice not only was that helpful for me just navigating uh, the industry but also was helping me build connections which is so important in business and then in life in general or in any industry is having those connections and they have proved to be very valuable in my short three months of being in the the wedding industry and having the the confidence and also the knowledge to do that to reach out to people I think comes back to my previous business experience and just being like in the corporate world and understanding that that's what like knowing people is how you get ahead it was so good so cool to hear your journey and how you came into it and um yeah I love what you just said about meeting other people and in general in New Zealand I find that most vendors and people that work in the industry are really kind and helpful and want to lift each other up and super positive I don't know like sometimes there's a bit of competition I guess but I find most people pretty lovely and like there's enough work to go around and all of that yeah it's definitely a relatively new 
concept in New Zealand before and I have chatted to a few content creators on here and then I see more and more pop up every day well not every day but like yeah more and more people jumping on which is cool and there's definitely a need for it so it's great that people just yeah inquired and booked with you straight away if you found because it is quite new you've had to sort of educate couples around why they might want one or even yeah on social media just sort of like explaining what it is and why people might want one at their wedding yeah well I feel like I've done a really good job at making sure on like my website and social media uh, my Instagram like what actually is wedding content creation what service I am offering uh, and then taking that at the next step further with my price and info guide again explaining it so people will really understand and, and make sure what it is and having all of that those systems set up has meant that I haven't really had any actual conversations where people are like what is it that you actually do uh, which is awesome saves me time and means that the clients know exactly what they are getting uh, there has been one um, bride that's booked with me that I need to follow up because she's like I can't wait for you to photograph our wedding and I just haven't had a chance to be like just double checking you actually still have a photographer because I'm just going to be turning up with my cell phone uh, but I just haven't got around to that yet and that's the only one there I've been a little bit like huh are the expectations set in place because and I think that's yeah something that I'll learn as I go on uh, and I've got that wording in my price and info gu guide like I'm not here to replace a photographer or a videographer and I think setting that standard uh, is like really important uh, I am going to answer another one of your questions now which I think was around um, like which couples are booking mm -hmm. me so I'm finding that I've got two kind of target demographics I have people that are bougie as have all the budget in the world <laughs> they can afford a professional f photographer a professional videographer and then having content creation is like the icing on top because they've just got a little bit of extra room in the budget to have that next level of content being captured and then the other target demographic which is where I'm finding more that I'm sitting is couples that have the budget to fork out four to six k for a photographer and they would absolutely love a videographer but they just cannot afford it and if it wasn't for me they would have no video content so I'm filling that gap where they would rather have me as a content creator and capturing some film than having no film at all so that's definitely uh, I think where more of my target demographic is especially and the Manawatu as well, being in rural New Zealand, I feel like that's more the vibe with weddings down here. I would say maybe in Auckland is where I'd get more of those uh, bougie <laughs> inquiries. Uh, but I've had I've had a few, but yeah, more of the norm is filling the gap for people that wouldn't have any video at all because they can't afford it. Yeah, it's cool for people to have that option because I think so many people are like that and they'd love to get the full package of you know eight to ten grand of photography and videography but that's not realistic for everyone so being able to have something and yeah that sort of behind the scenes content even it's not always just for like posting on social media or just for like influencers that need it like yeah. some people just want it for themselves yeah I think I'm trying to work around my wording or my elevator pitch around that that it is not just for social media and uh, like I've seen other creators around the country as well and I see a lot that like um, and this is also fine but they're, they're not creating some kind of highlight form for them they're just giving the couple all of this content if they want to do something with it they can I think because I have so much background and experience and content creation and editing videos editing a uh, highlight form for me is only going to take me like it only takes me like a couple of hours and I do it on my phone and I think that's just because of my knowledge and experience like I'm able to do it quickly uh, I would yeah I'm really proud that I'm able to offer that as like a next level up because at least they have this three to five minute video or the length of it depends on the package they book but they have this video that they can send on Facebook to their friends or family and messenger or whatever email it to them I don't care but like something that they're able to share and be like hey here's a highlight of our day 
it's Sunday or when it's the day after the wedding. This was literally all filmed yesterday. Here you go. Uh, and it's just, yeah, a really nice way for couples to be able to share in their special day with other people, but also to relive it as well the very next day. I think that's what's so special about content creation as well, the speed of it. Uh, and that's why I think it has been so popular too. Absolutely. I think that's a cool offering that you've got to have a bit more of a like finished product alongside all the like raw content as well. Just something can be shared really quickly because yeah, not every couple might want to be like editing together this little thing from all the clips they've got the day after their wedding. Yeah. And it might take them like 10 hours and they can do it in two, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm happy to be able to offer that to them because with the raw images and videos, like I send them, depending on how long I, I'm there, I send them hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, you know, uh, it would take a long time to yeah sift through all that. And so obviously every wedding is a bit different and um, what their needs are, how long coverage they need and all of that. But um, yeah, if you're happy to talk about sort of where your pricing starts or what people can sort of expect if they're thinking of hiring a content creator. Yeah, sure. So I did do a little bit of research before setting my pricing uh, just with other content creators in Australia and New Zealand just to make sure I wasn't setting it way too low or way too high. And I, I think that comes back also to my previous business experience, making sure that I'm kind of about average. So one, I can get bookings and two, I'm, I'm not selling my soul. Um, but so at the moment I am doing introductory pricing for this current season. So it ends pretty soon. Uh, and I was Incre I am increasing my prices for the next wedding season, but I'm allowing people that if they book with me, I was doing 30th of April, but I'm probably going to extend it a little bit. Um, if they book before, I don't know, mid-May or whatever, then they I will honor my intro pricing for them. That's just as a way to add a bit of an incentive for people to book with me now. Uh, but for my current introductory season pricing, uh, my packages start at four hours and that's $700. And that gets them four hours of coverage, um, 400 plus ish photos, videos, and a one to two minute highlight video. And obviously the longer I'm there with them, the more images and videos they'll get. And also the highlight film will be longer as well. I found that most people are just booking me for eight to 10 hours. I have a four, six and eight hour package, but not too many people are interested in that four hour one but yeah my pricing starts from seven hundred dollars which I feel like is super accessible for people um trying to price accordingly with one my experience but also in relation to a professional videographer like I don't think content creators will ever be able to charge four thousand dollars for an eight hour day I don't know that might change surprised. but yeah. I, I <laughs> Really? Really? Okay. Maybe we can have a chat off here. <laughs> I follow this lady on TikTok. She's a um, a luxury uh, wedding content creator. And that's where I think she's definitely hitting that target demographic of the so bougie, they can afford professional photo, video, extra content creation on top. So I definitely am pricing accordingly, fulfilling that gap for people that can't afford professional video at 4K, but they can have me under 2K depending on the package that they book with me. And yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, it's super accessible for couples and it compensates me for the amount of work required and the experience and knowledge that's involved as well. Oh, that's good for people to hear. And are you um, doing mostly like local weddings? Do you travel quite a bit? Are you sort of like open to all over New Zealand? Yeah, so at the moment um, I have just been doing local with in like an hour um travel I have a few weddings booked in Martinborough uh next year which is I think two hours from where I am uh, one way uh so pushing a little bit into to other regions uh, at the moment though just sticking within my region and one of the reasons why I also launched so quickly is there was no one in the Manawatu. So I wanted to really establish myself as a first content creator in our region, which is awesome. Uh, but I would love to expand. 
um, I know there is other content creators on other regions and New Zealand is small, but I also feel like there is enough work for everyone, like you said at the beginning of the episode. So yeah, it would be so super cool to, to either myself travel uh, and do other weddings in other parts of the country. Because I have previous business, business experience, I am thinking about how I can scale this and I know other content creators have um, content creation businesses have content creators around the country so that is something that I might look towards doing in the future uh, as well seeing how we go um, someone that loves to grow sustainably and something that I can manage so yeah just keeping that at the forefront of everything that I do yeah so good yeah it's exciting the future in that space I think is just going to keep growing and growing every year doing it at your own pace is important as well and you've got some beautiful wedding venues down your way as well so so cool to just yeah establish yourself as like the local person yeah it's definitely popping off if you want to say more and more and a trend that I think is going to stick around but it is quite like a low barrier to entry sort of job I guess like everyone has an iPhone people just think oh why can't I just get my little cousin to do that kind of thing and yeah I think you've touched on a few things already that sort of set you apart in the industry and what your offering is and your knowledge and experience but what would you say to those people that are like I can just get anyone to do that like why do I need to hire somebody yeah that's um that's a really good question uh I think those couples that are like I could just get anyone well okay you do that (laughs) that's cool (laughs) uh but yeah I definitely feel yeah myself personally with having the experience I do have in the marketing space and the content creation space both for clients and then for myself personally and then I also have a podcast as well like I've been in this space for for a hot minute and yes everyone does have a phone and I think it is very easy easy to fall into the trap to be like well I consume social media I know how to create it like actually well you're trying you're trying to edit a five minute highlight film in two hours and then we'll get back to each other um and I mean like I am all for people starting their own businesses and I am here to encourage and support people that want to go out and try something for themselves but yeah not gonna lie I have seen people pop up that don't have any experience in content creation or any experience in running a business and I'm sure they will learn along the way but yeah I feel like there will start to be a bit of a difference and you'll be able to tell from people from content creators that do have that experience and then people that are students maybe or just starting out they have their phone and they want to maybe get into the space and yeah I would hope that the content creation offering in the winning industry will sort itself out in terms of where those people are priced um, and relative to each other. Since launching myself, I have seen a few pop up around in the Manawatu and across New Zealand as well, which is, yeah, it, it's really cool. But uh, yeah, I guess as couples to be or brides to be or whatever, just being cautious around whether you're wanting to book someone that has experience in the space or someone that just has their iPhone and is trying it out and yeah the worst thing would be someone spending I don't know two thousand dollars on someone who doesn't know what they're doing that would be literally yeah not very fun so I would just hope that yeah couples and stuff would do their due diligence around that and I mean we do all start somewhere and like with myself I didn't have a portfolio to show Uh, and what I literally did was I went and found my favorite content creators in the wedding industry overseas I downloaded a whole heap of videos of the vibe I was going for and I put that all on my website and I was like this is the vibe this is what I'm aiming for. I haven't shot a wedding yet. And then all it takes is that uh, one couple to take a chance on you and then you're able to show what you do. And I think again, because of my previous experience, meant it was so easy for me to get into. Obviously there was nerves around literally going to someone's wedding and capturing their day, which is something that I had to move through and I still am working through. But in terms of like the technical skills of how 
to capture content with my phone and how to edit it that was already there which has meant that I, I've been able to launch so quickly and get more bookings quickly because I've been able to capitalize on the weddings that I have done I, uh, I've only shot three weddings this season I would have done two more but I had to set myself a few more boundaries around my own wedding day I had an inquiry the week before and on my wedding day and I was like sorry about that I'm getting married so I can't shoot your wedding uh, but yeah still doing three has been a huge blessing has given me heaps of experience and also a ton of content for me to continue to market yeah so good I think um, that's great advice for people on sort of what to look for and yeah I really do think it is a skill and you have to have that sort of creative eye and yeah everyone might have an iPhone but it doesn't mean that you can do that it's just like with photographers I guess anyone can pick up a camera but it's not necessarily gonna you know all gonna create good work yeah looking out for that but yeah is there anything else you would say that couples should look for when they're trying to find a content creator for their wedding I think this is like with any vendor just making sure that the energy the vibe the values align I think that's so important the last thing you want is to be um, communicating with and then spending your wedding day with someone who you might not necessarily necessarily get along with uh, I think it's really important for wedding vendors in this industry to be quite personable people they're able to chat to anyone quite charismatic uh, and that's just the nature of the industry and I mean me even thinking about scaling and wanting to bring on content creators around the country like that is something that I've been thinking or in the back of my head like it's going to be so important for me to bring on the right people and it's not like I'm trying to hire myself but I need people that have energy have charisma they are able to hold themselves that's what I've learned is really important when you're uh, shooting a wedding that you're able to stay firm and stand on your own two feet and take initiative and know how to get stuff done because at the end of the day it's you uh and yeah that that's kind of what I'm thinking about in terms of when I'm scaling because training them to know exactly how to hold themselves and how to interact with the couples with the bridal party like that is all so important and and that comes with experience too though I feel like don't be afraid to ask those questions and it's so important just how someone shows up in the day that you have the sort of right personality or you kind of click with that couple and their family and their guests and um yeah it is one of those roles like a photographer and videographer that you're going to be hanging out with the couple in the bridal party most of the day so you want someone to just like bring the vibes like not make it all about themselves but just like fit in well and then yeah be able to just capture all that content as well yeah something that you just reminded me of actually which is something I'm conscious of because content creation is such a uh new service I try really hard to fit myself around the photographer. If there is a photographer and videographer, I try really hard to fit myself around them. Like the last thing I want is to get in the way. I personally think like they are the most important in terms of capturing content and I'm just kind of there on the side. Uh, I've been very blessed to work with some really cool photographers for the weddings that I have done. I haven't worked with a photographer and videographer at the same time so I think I'll come to that hurdle when I get there because that's where I guess it could be a little bit harder to make sure you are not getting in their way and stuff like that but I think a good content creator is aware of that as well I have heard some horror stories of content creators just absolutely getting in the way and that is something that I personally feel like we shouldn't do because we're just there to get those behind the scenes kind of on the sidelines and that's where I can also see wow why professional photographers and videographers are like who are these content creators coming with their phones like what are they doing what are they doing to the industry? Are they coming to steal our jobs? And I'm here to say no. <laughs> Good content creators are here to supplement the content that you're already getting. And we're just here to work around you and hopefully not get in your way, but still get good content. <laughs> yeah, it's so important. I think it's just key to be able to all communicate and work seamlessly together. And yeah, I've definitely heard of you. <laughs> 
horror stories from um, photographers. And yeah, I'm obviously biased being one myself, but I haven't had any bad experiences. And um, yeah, you don't want to sort of have this hierarchy on the day, but you are kind of a bit more important and um, just, yeah, being aware of each other. And then, because I know some people have like, second shooters and so they have two photographers two videographers and then there's content creator as well it's like just quite a lot of humans physically (laughs) to work around yeah obviously most of the time you're not all getting the same angle so you're sort of spread out but there is a bit of just like being really aware of not being in each other's shots and I think especially with video it's a bit harder to crop people out than um photos but if you can find someone like a content creator who um, is going to fit well with your vendors that you've already hired to. And then, yeah, I think like you say, making those industry connections. I know quite a few photographers that have sort of linked up with content creators they recommend or, you know, found people they work really well together and then can sort of book all those same weddings and work together or even create a little package that they work together. So symphony bringing all your vendors together and that everyone meshes well which most of the time happens I find at the end of the day like all the other vendors they kind of are our colleagues Mm, you know like in a very weird way but it is true like photographers video whatever we're like all working for ourselves but when we come together to the space we all do have to to work together so having those yeah established relationships and connections is where that becomes so important because then, I mean, if you're all getting on and you're vibing, then you're all just friends and you're all just hanging out at someone's wedding doing your work. And I feel like that's where the most enjoyable uh, weddings and jobs come from as well when you're able to just hang out with people that you get on really well with. I just find that's such an important thing. Like that's the way I like to do business, just being kind to everyone. And um, yeah, I know that there's some people that have, run-ins or get annoyed but yeah I just think we can all sort of lift each other up and like I send all the vendors I work with photos after weddings we've worked on together because you know they're amazing flowers made my photos look good and even though you're sort of like the copyright owner I think you can share everything around you're only gonna like create better connections and get in front of their audiences as well so yeah that's a good way to go about it just like being kind to everyone cheesy but yeah it's true 100 percent, i agree with that yeah and i mean that just applies to life in general Mm, i think absolutely been so nice to chat to you today is there anything else you want to add as we wrap up uh i'm someone that has struggled to figure out what i want to do in life and i mean we all do and I don't think we ever figure it out, but like, this is one of the first things in my life, like doing this wedding content creation that like, I absolutely love it and I'm having so much fun and I feel really grateful that I've been able to find something like this. So yeah, I'm excited to continue growing and I have a, yeah, a pretty busy next wedding season ahead, which is so, so exciting. Uh, And yeah, it's just so fun capturing people's day days of love like that's so awesome and it's cool that I was able to take that leap and yeah be a part of the industry oh I love to hear that it's definitely a positive industry to be a part of like how can you not be happy (laughs) on wedding days so so cool thank you so much for coming on thank you thanks for having me